Hi, and welcome back to this ninth lecture in this series on SumPy. In this video, we're continuing the theme of working with calculus in SumPy. We're going to look at limits and series. So first of all, as usual, we'll just import SumPy as sp. So in calculus, we're introduced to limits of a certain function, I'll just call it f of x, towards a point p. So when a function is continuous, we know that this limit just corresponds to evaluating the function at the point p. However, sometimes the limit exists even though the function value does not exist. So we denote this limit by this symbol here. And the fact is that we can calculate this limit in SumPy for a wide range of functions. So let's first consider a simple example. Let's just first create a symbol, as usual, just sp dot symbol with x. This gives us our symbol, and now let's make an expression or a function. So let the expression be x to the second power. We can have it printed out here. And then we can take the limit by using the limit function of SumPy. So we just write sp dot limit like that. Nothing else to be done. And then we can pass in our expression. This is what we want to take the limit of. So in this notation up here, this is just our function f. The variable we're considering the limit of is the variable x. And the point we want to take the limit towards is, let's say in this example, 1. So here we get out the value 1. But the fact is x squared is also well defined. In 1's we can just substitute the value as well if we wanted to. So we could have just written the expression and then use the subs function we've seen previously with x and 1. And here you can see we get the same thing. So if it's possible to evaluate a function, we can just do that instead of the limit function. However, not everything is that simple. For instance, you cannot evaluate a function at infinity. For that, we need to take the limit. So let me define here a function that is very rapidly decaying. So let's call this exponential. And this is x divided by the exponential function of x. So let me just print it out. Here's a different way of reformulating this. This is a function that decays very quickly. In this case, we want to take the limit as x approaches infinity. So we do sp.limit, take our expression, this is the exponential, then we take the variable, and finally we take the point where we want the limit to go towards. In this case, this is infinity, and this we write by sp.oo. By evaluating this, we get zero, because this is rapidly decaying. In this case, substitution doesn't work, because you can't substitute in infinity. So if I take my expression, this is exponential, I use the subs function, like this, and I want to substitute in infinity, you can see here that this doesn't really work. I just get out another number. So keep this in mind if you want to take the limit towards something where the function value isn't defined, like for instance infinity, then you need to use sp.limit. Before moving on to series, you should definitely watch out about something very peculiar. So limits in SumPy are by default taken from the right. So let me show you what that actually means. So let's define an expression which is simply 1 divided by x. A pretty simple expression, and you can see here that if I do sp.limit of my expression, with respect to x towards the point zero, I get plus infinity. So if I let x tend towards zero from the right, then I get plus infinity. However, you can also do this from the left. So what you do is just to take your usual limit and then take your expression x to the point zero, but then you specify a fourth argument, and this is a string where you just can specify plus or minus. So if you take minus, then you take the left limit. If you take plus, which is the default, then you get the right limit. Plus gives us plus infinity, as before. If I take minus here, this gives us minus infinity. If I let x tend towards zero from the left side, meaning from negative numbers, then I'll get minus infinity for the function one over x. You can also get both the right and left limit by specifying both of them. What you do then is just say sp.limit, take your expression, take your variable, take your point, and finally just specify plus and minus together in a string here. Here you can see that I got infinity with a tilde above, and this is a bit of a strange notation. This indicates that the right and left limit are not the same, since the right limit is plus infinity, and the negative one is negative infinity. So just be careful when you take limits in SumPy, that by default they're taken from the right, but you can also specify that they should be taken from the left, or specify both of them. Okay, so let's move on to series. So series, or also called series expansions, are a way to expand really tricky arbitrary functions into polynomials. So the thing is that polynomials are usually a lot easier to deal with than arbitrary functions, and luckily we can expand any at least reasonably nice function into an infinite sum of polynomials. This is what's called the Taylor series, or again the Taylor series expansion. 
So for instance, if I want to take, let's take the sine function like this, I can expand this into an infinite polynomial by simply doing sp dot series, taking in the sine function, this infinite series at the point pi divided by two, make my pi divided by two. So this is what's called the Taylor series at the point pi divided by two. So this is an approximation of the sine function close to this point pi over two. So if you evaluate this thing here in points x that are close to pi over two, we'll get values that are very close to the sine function. So the first part is kind of clear. This is one, here is some x minus pi half to the second power and some nonsense like this. But here you get this big O thing here. In a simplified way, you can think of this here as containing all the rest of the terms in an infinite polynomial where each term here has a power of x minus pi half that are to the power six or higher. So let's see what we can do with the Taylor series. So let's make a nice, reasonably simple expression. Let's take the exponential function and then also let's take the sine function. So here we have this, let's just visualize it. It's a pretty straightforward function, but it's definitely not a polynomial. But still, we can expand it into an infinite polynomial close to say the point zero. So let's do sp dot series, take our expression, take our variable, take the point in which we want to expand it towards and run this. And here we see that we get a polynomial up to the fifth order, and then this thing indicates powers that have order six or higher. If we want to specify that we want more terms, then we can do that with an optional argument here that's called n. Let's say it to eight, for instance. Now we can see that we get just more terms. So very close to zero, so for values of x close to zero, this thing here is a very good approximation to this function here. So since we have now Taylor series, which are essentially just polynomials, we can do all kinds of useful arithmetic. So for once we can take this thing here, let me just copy it, and we can multiply it by another Taylor series. So let's say I do another series, let's do almost the one we had up here previously. So let's do sine of x with respect to x at zero. Let's say here that I want six terms. So actually the order has been switched here. So this one here, is this one, and this one here is of course the one we had here. And you can see that by default it doesn't really expand the series, but of course we can make it expand it by just wrapping it in a big parenthesis and calling the expand method. Now everything will be multiplied out, and the Taylor series for this product here is this thing here. Since we know how to integrate and differentiate polynomials, we can also do this very easily with Taylor series. So say again I have the same Taylor series thing here, just to show it. Now what I can do is to differentiate it, and that works perfectly fine. So this is the original series, and now if you differentiate it, then differentiating 1 will be 0, differentiating x will be 1, this is this here, differentiating x squared over 2 will just be x, so that's this one, and so on. So either if we want to do differentiation, or say integration by the integrate function that Stina told you about, then you can do both of them easily. Finally, a lot of newcomers, when they encounter this Taylor series thing, they're a bit scared about this big O notation here. What you can do is to remove that notation completely. So say again that I just copy this series here. I want to remove this thing here and just consider the polynomial. Then I can just write dot remove O. This is a big O, then parentheses. So this is a method. Now if I call this, I'll just get the polynomial. You can see also now that it's been rearranged, so you have the biggest terms first, going all the way down to the smallest terms, as you usually would write a polynomial. In the next video, Stine is going to tell you how to solve ordinary differential equations by using SumPy. If you like our content, then consider liking the video and subscribing for more similar content. Thanks, we'll see you again soon.